We're out of sequence already. Hello, I'm Clark Farley. And I'm Denise Fazzaro. And welcome to the 20-minute real estate briefing coming to you live from Westerly, Rhode Island, Randall Realtors. We invite you to share, no, we invite you while we share our insights and experiences, tips and tactics over that we've acquired over quite a few years to help you become a better buyer and a skilled seller. There's a good chance I'll do a good job tonight because I was always intimidated when you did that little section. And we I didn't mess section. it up. <laughs> yeah, but you did. Thank you very much. She's just being kindly. And we'll be moving around a little bit more than normal uh, because we're using a different uh, setup, a computer setup. So we're just trying to get in frame, which uh, Denise is not in frame. Uh, but I, I will, will be. continue on with this thing. Welcome to repeat ourselves. Uh, Denise and I, uh, we developed this 20-minute uh, uh, real estate briefing series uh, simply to give buyers and sellers an edge, a little bit of edge. You know, most of us do, if we're setting out to doing something new uh, and, of course, selling, buying a house, the first one especially, uh, or selling your house maybe the first time, is new and it's also the biggest transaction most people get involved in. They're totally going to be going out and looking for information, um, how it's done, what the uh, best com current practices are. Uh, so, of course, we're on the Internet. We're live on the Internet. And the one thing the Internet doesn't lack is room for information. Oh, I got him out of frame. Um, so there's plenty of how-to videos over on YouTube that are available to anyone looking to educate themselves as to how to buy a house, how to sell a house. This is different. 20-minute briefings are different. Because when it comes to education, the reality for most consumers is real estate education, it takes place in the backseat of an agent's car or in the kitchen, somebody's kitchen. That's where our briefings will start. It's the idea of the, the reality as opposed to the ideal. That's right. And that worked. Did I do that? That was all right. Did that I was okay. Not quite, quite the way you wanted to do it, but it came out all right. We had a big discussion over that joke, which I suppose I should make a note that there was a joke just a couple of seconds ago, but I didn't. You didn't it. follow through right. Uh, okay. But as we were talking about real estate? Some weeks we are going to be focusing on the buyer's experience and other weeks on the seller's. Our, and sometimes both. Yeah. Our uh, goal, go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's uh, what I'm alluding to, little vignettes uh, the prospect, from the perspective of buyers and sellers, not somebody lecturing to you. So we ha we'll have series in, with titles like, what do we do next? Uh, we know you told us this in the beginning of our search, or what happens now? Or even a title like... Our title tonight, an offer or two, now what? Before we get into that, though, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe to us on YouTube. That's the Coastal New England Real Estate Team. And you'll find some of our past briefings there. Tell your friends about us, like us, share us. Anyone you know who's looking for real estate, please ask them to watch. They're bound to learn something they can use. You'll see a chat box here on the uh, Facebook page. Please don't hesitate to put in a question or give us some suggestions for topics or technical suggestions. <laughs> oh, if you've got a better way of doing this, please let us know. Um, and um, also, I have put our email address in there. So if you don't get a chance to chat, you can always uh, email us and we will get back to you and or include it in one of our future uh, briefings. Yeah. And, you know, we, we talk about that a lot. Uh, if you want to... Uh Ask a question and don't be afraid of hijacking the uh, uh, the topic because the, we're trying to duplicate that whole experience. You know, if you're out there sitting and your cousin is in the middle of inspections on the house and is running into a problem, ask that. Kind of ask because that's kind of what this thing is about: applying information and our experience to the context of a of a given situation. You need to be more over this one. Yes. I think I am in frame. I just think that's what we're looking at. Okay. Anyway, we're going to talk about um, the offer, but we do want to start off by saying that in the current market, which is very, very busy, and it is a seller's market, we are seeing multiple offers. In another market, you may see low offers. 
you may be on the market for a few months and not have an offer right away and may even have to discuss your pricing. Um, so, you know, this is, this is primarily about this market, but in a market where prices are low and people are making offers that you may not like, we do have a strategy that proves effective for that that we'd like to mention to you. Yeah. Oh, the pretend it's a good offer? Pretend it's a good offer. It's a strategy we developed a number of years ago in a different market, as Denise just alluded to. And, and, and frankly, the more normal market. What we're experiencing, in my opinion, is not the way it'll always be. And it hasn't always been this kind of crazy shortage, urgency offers. But when things are, times are normal, you, you will see offers come in on your house, Mr. Seller, because we're talking mostly to seller, right? Yes, tonight's the seller show. Okay. So we're in the kitchen or in the back seat of the car? In the kitchen. Okay. 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 Right. Uh, so you, if you had normal times and you got a single offer, the strategy points out what well, we talk a lot about, <laughs> just like on TV. Would you please? <laughs> get to the point. Yes. Uh, the basis for the pretend it's a good offer strategy is to diffuse a seller's normal reaction to a low offer. If you're asking $100,000 and somebody comes with an offer, bona fide offer, and says, I'll give you 75000 for it, many sellers will say, get out of here. Uh, the pretend it's a good offer strategy says, okay, imagine if it was good, what would you have counted that? The reason it works is there's a big percentage of people who make low offers because Uncle Ned told them all. Or HDTV. Yeah, HDTV comes in and says, of course, you got to, you'd be a fool to uh, offer anything more than 20% off list price, that kind of stuff. So what it does, the strategy, it gives cover to the buyers. And when it works, what you see is they you respond it works more often than you would think a lot of times because somebody has said to them you've got to try to go as low as you want, you can um once they realize that you're going to make a you are reasonable you're going to counter with something reasonable they realize you're not going to give it away and then well, they come back and they give you a better offer even more they got cover with uncle ned yeah, they exactly. go back to, okay, Uncle Ned, we offered that. They didn't they, want it, and we really wanted the house. So. And nine times out of ten, they will come back at what their normal, if it, Uncle Ned wasn't around. Right, exactly. Enough of Uncle Ned. All right, so that was about what, in a different market. But right now, we do have multiple offers, and so what we like to do is have our sellers um, have the offers in front of them. So sometimes we sit down at the table with them, unfortunately during COVID, sometimes we email them the offers and then we talk to them on the phone and we ask them to print them out in front of them while we go over the case of each offer. Because the bottom line is, the first thing anybody wants to look at on their offer is how much are they offering? And that's not the only indicator that might be of interest to you as a seller. Um, for example, if someone offers a hundred thousand dollars for your property and don't panic nobody's house is worth a hundred dollars thousand dollars today in this market in our area but let's say that's what happens and they asked you to pay five thousand dollars in closing cost well now your offer is only ninety five thousand dollars so you can't just look at that top line and say oh good that's a great offer because there's more in the offer and the points we're going to hit on are information that should be in any offer you receive yeah. You know why I like having them printed out if I'm not going to be there? Why? It's because these, this is an offer in their house. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. They get totally excited. Yeah. So yeah. having a piece of paper, because you know how it is. Hey, quick, I'll give you $100,000, take $5,000 off of that, and I have ex their expect inspections, and then I want to call it. I mean, it's going to run together. Yeah, it runs together. And also, I think the other thing is is that it's documented. It, they have it in front of oh, them. Well, they can look back. What did she say? What did they, you know, what are they talking about? So it's right there in front of there. Because this is, this is the thing, and I was, when I was doing the notes today, this is where your agent earns their commission because it's their job to... Mm -hmm. Not just place it, place it in context and care for you, the client, but to take the energy out of it, the yes, emotion. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Right, because there is emotion here. I mean, when you get that low ball offer, if oh, you ever get that, offer. it hurts. It's like, my house is worth more than that. 
<laughs> More than that, if you mm -hmm. get five offers, you're king of the world. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Looks, it's triple then price. it becomes stressful. Yeah. And one of the things we try to do in every one of these briefings is give you information so we can relieve some of the stress for you. A perspective. A perspective. A perspective. And that's what the agent's doing. He's saying, yeah. you know, chill. Mm -hmm. Here's some things on paper. And it, it doesn't do it completely automatically, but it, it surely does it a lot easier if you can have a piece of paper or something down in front of you, you can X out and, and yes. do that kind of stuff. So other things to consider on the offer is how much is the po deposit? Now, all of the deposits are refundable if the deal falls apart for any reason other than the uh, buyer defaulting. But it is important that they put some type of deposit down. Uh, we have something called earnest money deposit or consideration, which is what they put down in order to make this a valid offer. And that doesn't have to be a large amount of money. And we've talked about this in other uh, briefings, but it is something that you can negotiate. So we're not going to go into it a lot here, but it is something, it is a negotiation item. Um, one of the other big things is financing. And right. that's what, isn't that one of the two big tipping points? Right, because if... Or risk points. Might be risk right. points, because if someone is offering you the money... If, well, if, put it another way. If, if you've got an offer that you accept, there's a, two major points between now and the closing. Closing is success. The, the places it can go south... Uh, built in are the financing because they have an inspection or a uh, financing contingency and inspections. Correct. So stress points are right are there. So you want to know about their financing. You want to see a pre-qualification letter or a pre-approval letter. You want to know what kind of a mortgage they're getting, and that should be in that letter. Um, what kind of a mortgage is important? If they're putting 20% down and getting a traditional mortgage, they are not required to have any specific inspection bars. So in other words, yeah. they don't have to... The um, appraiser is just looking at the house. Is not it's he's looking at it for the buyer's point perspective, not for the lender too. Yeah, um, so if you have an FHA, a VA, a USDA mortgage, then they're looking at it for the lender as well. Yeah. And the appraiser also is looking at condition when he comes. Yeah. If you have peeling paint, that's an issue for those mortgages. So you have to know what kind of mortgage your buyer has so you know if you may be looking at some issues for your property in the future that may help, may reduce the price later or actually not be able to close. Good point. Mm -hmm. And in fact, doesn't that, that goes into the idea of trying to look at the, the offer and trying to determine the value of the offer against the amount of the offer. Right. If you're in a multiple offer situation is what we're really talking about because if you've got yeah. a cash yeah. buyer who's provided you with proof of funds to show he has the cash, then their inspections are just for their purposes and um, you will... I can't read that. Oh, I can We have read. a question. Hi, Emma. Are there any certain types of financing that look better to sellers when submitting an offer? Oh, man, she's reading my mind. Well, go say oh. it then. What's the question? <laughs> yes, um, and that's a good point, Emma, because it's that's that value thing. So, as Denise was saying, cash, of course, cash is good, but, you know, it's not that common. Uh, right. The types of financing, as Denise just said, conventional, and then others. Others being FHA, the USDA, PGA. No, VA. <laughs> uh, the conventional mortgage is pretty much the gold standard of mortgages. That's the the lender. Yeah, that's, they're putting that's, twenty percent down. They're going to borrow eighty percent. Um, and I also think where they're getting their financing from is sometimes um, <laughs> important because there are different financial institutions, and some of them. Are, and brake lenders and brokers. Right. So that also can be important to to a seller to know or know of or find out be aware more, of be aware of where the money's coming from. And in most jurisdictions, uh, at least Rhode Island, Connecticut, uh, practices allow your listing agent to follow up on the uh, the lender mm -hmm. of a buyer's offer. So if you're if you're in contract, because that's one of the value items, time. So they'll come to you in the offer and they'll say, I'd like to close by this length of time. Um, 
and financing is a big part of that. So mm -hmm. if they go long, for some reason, you want to be able to check up on it. You want to keep yes. track of that. And that brings us to the closing date, which is also a negotiable item. So closing dates are come in on your offer when the buyer wants to close. The buyer should have been checking with their finance person to see how much time they need. Um, so you do have to be reasonable for lenders to process the paperwork. And in this current market with multiple offers and a lot of things selling, that time is taking longer. But then once the lender's needs are met, um, you can pick a date that is good for both yeah. of you. Um, you know, sometimes you say, oh yeah, that's Aunt so-and-so's birthday. Let's get have that that sure. day. Or other times it's around your work schedule or well, we want to close on a Friday because then we have a weekend to move. So it is a negotiable item. Hmm. So. And, you know, and as I'm listening, I'm hearing more and more, which I, the value of the agent. Yes, absolutely. That's why we do this. Pre <laughs> well, presenting context, keeping it as objective or non-stressful, which is keep the energies down, uh, keeping track of the person, you know, the financing, mm -hmm. um, with inspections which will be coming to, uh, within the period of time, certain set period of time, commonly ten days, uh, ten business days. It varies from place to place, like a kit. Look at the camera. Oh, thank you. Don't make me keep doing that. <laughs> well, you're not supposed to tell them that. Uh, well, you say, what did I miss? Yes. Anyway, Clark was talking about inspections. So inspections are not really negotiable. The buyer has a right to have inspections, and um, occasionally they'll waive those, but that's not common. Hmm. Um, and as a buyer's agent, I never recommend they waive their inspection right. But in different states, the inspection time period is a little bit different, but it's usually within the first few weeks. In Rhode Island, it's 10 business days. Mm -hmm. In Connecticut, we usually give like two weeks, but it's not business days. So it, the inspection period is over quickly. The thing with the inspection period is, number one, the buyer can walk away from the deal for any reason that if they're dissatisfied with the inspection. Or they can come back to you to try to renegotiate the mm -hmm. price, or some other information, like, I don't know what else they would be negotiated, but well, price or repairs, yeah. or price or repairs. Yeah, and that's where we get into the, back to the value of the agent, and there's, I don't know if we have Ooh, time to go in. Yeah, we got three minutes to talk about lender required repairs versus buyer inspection Well, repairs. we did a little bit on that when we talked about financing, so I think there is a difference between that, and that's again where the financing comes in. The lender required repairs are the ones that are USDA, FHA, VA, those are the ones you get those in, right? And that ties into the uh, the idea of what the, your listing agent is doing because your listing agent should know who the likely buyer is and knowing the market will know the likely financing. Exactly. So if they're saying, hey, look guys, if you're not going to do anything to the house, we can count on lender required repairs from VA, especially mm -hmm. VA, and FHA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oftentimes if I see peeling paint when I go to a listing appointment, I'll prepare them that it could be an issue so for those buyers. So as an agent, that's what we're supposed to be doing. To you. And this is comes to that value. Huh? Huh? Time. Oh, okay. Valuation of the offer. Yes, exactly. That's what this is about, valuating the offer. So finally is the additional provisions. So occasionally you'll get someone who has a house to sell and they could put in their additional provisions that I want to buy your house, but I need to sell my house. And that is a little bit, that's almost another whole free thing, and we will go into that, but that is something to consider if you've got a couple of offers that may not be the deal you want to take, um, even if it is a higher price yeah, offer. Yeah, you ran into that. Yeah, I just ran into that recently. Yeah. Then um, Price isn't everything. No, it is not everything. So and the other thing is sometimes in um, in your offer they're going to ask you to leave the couch or maybe the lawnmower or you know we really like that gas grill or whatever that sometimes is in your offer as well and you know if it's if it's a big ask and the price is up there but somebody else isn't asked for it with a lower well, you might consider leaving the stuff mm -hmm. if that's the deal you want yeah right yeah totally. <laughs>
So. <laughs> There's so much to this real estate business, isn't there? Yes, there really is. And we are running out of time. Oh. Yes. Right. So we're going to ask you once again to please oh. subscribe to us on YouTube. It's the Coastal New England Real Estate Team. Follow us on, oh, we got a closing cost, a question on closing costs. If the buyer can afford the closing costs, would it be to their advantage to roll the money into the mortgage instead? Well, that's a financial issue. Um, yes, buyers oftentimes put the closing cost into their mortgage, even if they can afford it, and then they can use the money for something else. That's if the lender, you know, says that they're qualified to get that much more. But if you do that, typically, if I'm working with a buyer and they want to offer 125,000 and they want to have 5,000 in closing costs, I point out that that's really 120,000 to the seller. So they might want to up the offer a little bit if they're real, you know, so the seller knows they're getting a little bit more, that 5,000 more. Yeah, because the, a, a seller will look at it, as we've already said, how much money and how likely is it to close? Right, exactly. It doesn't matter. If it's because selling appraisal balance. is a big deal on this too. Yeah. Because if it doesn't appraise, it doesn't matter what that per buyer offered you, you're going to have to renegotiate because you're not going to get that amount of money if the appraisal doesn't come in. Yeah, yeah. And what good does it do? All right. that money. Exactly. You don't close. Exactly. And then you go back on the market. And we don't want to talk about that. That's a brief, brief That's a That's a debit briefing. So, so thank you very much for watching. What other places did you say? What are the places? Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Oh, so speaking of Instagram, uh, watch your Instagram follow or whatever the heck you do with Instagram. But we're doing a uh, semi uh, contest at least once a week. Uh, we're There's in no South prizes County. though. Well, Not yet anyway. We're in South County, are we? So you, there'll be pictures. We ask you to try to figure out where in South County you are. That's right. That's so right. next week's briefing. Uh, same time, 5.30 on Wednesday night, is time to negotiate, win, lose, or compromise. That's kind of catchy. It's catchy. So we'll see you next week. Yes, we will. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.